think it's been a remarkable bipartisan success story. We didn't get it right from the start, um, but it's shown a, an ability of Congress to course correct, to learn from their mistakes, to improve the law. We saw reauthorizations in 1996 and again in 2006 that put sustainability at the center of the law. Um, and we're seeing a lot of success. So nationally, 44 stocks have rebuilt to health around the country because of the conservation mandates in the law. And we're seeing uh, fisheries rebuild. We're seeing overfishing drop to new lows. Um, it's not a silver bullet. It's not working everywhere. But we think, in general, it's an extremely successful law. The law is up for reauthorisation. Um, it's overdue for reauthorisation, so naturally lawmakers are looking at what improvements they can make or what changes. We're concerned that some of the legislation that's pending in Congress would take us backwards. Um, and in particular, there's a House bill that is coming up for a vote this week, um, HR 200, which we think doesn't learn from the lessons of the past. It um, rolls back rebuilding requirements that have been successful. It carves out exemptions in certain cases for annual catch limits, moves science away from the centre of the process where we think it needs to be. So we are concerned about that. You asked about commercial and recreational divides. Um, there are some commercial fishermen who are supporting this bill. There are many recreational anglers who are opposing the bill. But it is true that there is a real constituency of sports fishermen um, who are supporting the current reauthorisation plan. Um, because they are fr frustrated with management challenges in the, their regions, particularly the Gulf of Mexico. We think the answer for them is to improve management at the regional level rather than mess with the law. We think it's one of the real uh, core strengths of the Act. It is a, a dynamic and innovative federalist structure that makes sure that we're not micromanaging our fisheries from Washington DC, but rather empowering our stakes, our local stakeholders, to, to govern their fisheries. The regional councils have a lot of power. They're the ones who can really design the management systems that best suit their fisheries. Um, and it's been going for 42 years. It's been remarkably successful. We've had great outcomes from the councils, some great folks involved in the council process. So we really think that that's the strength of the law. Many success stories. One that I'd like to talk about is Pacific groundfish. So this fishery was declared a federal disaster in 2000. Um, it used to have wide market share. It was displaced by imports and by farm tilapia um, as, as it struggled and really circled the drain. Um, and fishermen and conservationists came together to create a new management system in 2011. It's been stunningly successful. It's reduced bycatch by 80%. It's rebuilt species after species to health. Um, and just last year, we saw a 50% increase in landings from 40 million pounds to 60 million pounds. And that's only going to go up. So we think that's a win-win. It's a more healthy fishery. It means more healthy fishing industry um, economy, uh, better coastal community dynamics. Now, once again, that fishery is not all the way there. We need to struggle to get back the market share that we lost. Um, and get more revenue for those guys. But we think it's an incredible, um, incredible trajectory in that fishery. It has. Um, the fathers of the act, if you like, were uh, Warren Magnuson, a Democrat from Washington State, and Ted Stevens, a Republican from Alaska. It's historically been a very bipartisan issue. Um, in 2006, the reauthorization cleared the Senate by unanimous consent, with every Democrat and Republican on board. That's how we like to see it. Um, unfortunately, it has become more partisan in this reauthorization. We hope we can go back to the old approach.